So radioactivity decay, um, <clears throat> it's random, which means each atom has its own rate of decay. Or uh, each the rate of decay of each atom are specific. It might happen next week, next instant, or next week. It might happen in a million years. Um, so whether it's carbon atom or oxygen atom or uranium atom, each one has its own particular rate. We measure the rate of decay by the half-life. So the half-life, um, if you start off with a, a thousand grams of carbon, say, after the first half-life you get 500 grams. So the amount goes down by 50%. After the second half-life you get 250 grams. So each time it drops by 50%. After the third half-life you're down to 125 grams. And then the fourth half-life you're down to 62 and a half grams. So that's what's meant by half-life, the time taken for half the amount to disappear. So a little bit of time eventually goes down to zero grams. Um, so <coughs> to when, when the amount of atoms decay, <laughs> when the amount of carbon, say, decays and disappears, um, the carbon is actually changing into new isotope and so the old carbon in this case is disappearing and it's becoming a new isotope. What, what are isotopes? Well, so you've got carbon-12 which is a standard periodic table of carbon can change the carbon changes into carbon-13 both are six protons so this is the old isotope, that's a new isotope. So isotopes are basically the same element, but with different versions of it with different number of neutrons. Okay. So when you have lots of isotopes that say carbon and nitrogen and oxygen, what makes them just what's the difference between them is the number of neutrons they have. So carbon twelve, which is mass twelve, six protons, six neutrons, and mass twelve. Whereas carbon thirteen has six protons but seven neutrons and mass 13. Okay, is carbon 14 has six protons, eight neutrons and mass 14. So it's got two extra neutrons which is why it's got a mass which is two bigger than carbon 12. Um, all, so these isotopes are atoms of the same element but with different number of neutrons. And then your oxygen Oxygen is 16, is 8 protons, is also 8 neutrons, mass 16. This is the standard oxygen we breathe, but the isotope oxygen 17 has 8 protons but 9 neutrons, mass 17. Okay, so, so this is what an isotope is. Um, so, and then I've written Helium is another example. So helium is normally 40, mass 4, with two protons, two neutrons, mass 4. An isotope of helium, an isotope with two protons and three neutrons is helium mass 5. Okay, and oxygen. Um, so when you're, when the way these use, if you're measuring amounts of carbon, say in nitrogen, in old fossils or bones or, or even in air. If you say find rocks with an air trapped in bubbles that's millions of years old, what you do is you measure the ratio of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16. But by comparing the ratios you can work out how old the, the, old the fossil is um, or how old the oxygen is that's in the fossil or in the boat, in the, in the rock. Um, so, um, and the way we we sort of graph half lives is like this. So I said for every period of half life, the mass goes down for fifty percent. So if I draw on the y axis the mass, hundred grams, and the x axis the half lives, first, second, third, fourth, fifth half life. Okay. So at hundred grams. After one half life, 
the mass drops to 50%. So, put a point here. And after two half lives, the, after another half life has passed, the mass drops by another 50%, from 50 to 25%. And that the third half life is dropped again by 50%, so it goes from 25 to 12 and a half. So, first it loses 100, it loses 50% of that, goes to 50, then loses 50% of this, goes to 25, then loses 50% of that, and goes to 12 and a half. So, when you plot this, you get a curve showing the, the, the reduction in mass as half lives go by. Okay? So, that's what this graph is um, showing you. And um, half lives can be any length from, from microseconds, milliseconds to thousands of years and even millions of years. So they can be microseconds, one second, one day, one minute, one month, even millions of years. They don't have to be fixed now, so it might be 2.4 seconds or something. They don't, they're usually not a fixed number like this. Um, uranium and plutonium have half lives which are actually um, quite long. So uranium-236 is a half-life of 23 million years and carbon-14 is a half-life of 5,730 years. So th this is the reason why nuclear power stations which use uranium and plutonium to create energy, electricity. You may have heard of radioactive waste. This is a reason why radioactive waste is a problem because the half-life well, the uranium is 223 million years, so it takes a long time for it to, to decay. So this stuff is very radioactive and very dangerous, and it's very difficult for them to get rid of it completely, but it gets buried in the ground usually, I think. And carbon-12 is, carbon-14, carbon-12 is stable. Carbon-14 is half-life of just over 5,000 years. So. So this is what half-lives are. It's the time taken for half the mass to decay. Um, in this case, it changes into a new isotope. So, um, so yeah, if you have carbon, simple, this is the simplest explanation. Start off with, say, a kilogram of carbon, after one half life, you got, say, 5,000 years, 5,500 years, you got 500 grams left. After another 5,500 years, you got 250 grams left. And after another 5,000 years, 125 grams. And then another 5,500 years, you got 62 grams left. So eventually it will become zero. So that's what half lives are.